Welcome to this third series of Business Bites. I'm going to focus uh, quite a bit in this time uh, over the next few weeks on our people that work for us, that we work with, and even our customers in connecting with them. Uh, the first one this week, I want to talk about leading people. Everything we do, whether we own a business, uh, they work for us, uh, even in our families and day-to-day -day life, it's all about leading people and obviously leading them in the right direction. I've met and I've dealt with many leaders in business and small and large organisation over many years of working. And those that stood out to me and were seeing results were leaders who kept in touch with their people. I was never a fan of closing the door and not allowing people to uh, see me. I know at times we have to do things and not be interrupted, uh, but I often would stay at home and do the work or go to a meeting room and do that work. I was not a fan of uh, closed doors. I know sometimes you need to do it, but it can become a habit. Uh, Lachlan Murdoch, who's the son of the media mogul Rupert Murdoch, once said, some of our line employees have developed innovations in their own time that have saved us hundreds of thousands of dollars. And these were ideas that our senior management would never have thought of, either through busyness or capability. And they came from the people that were working down the line. Australian businessman Jerry Harvey from Harvey Norman said, I've not seen any business that really uses their staff well. Employees are a large resource, so why limit yourself to your own ideas when there's the opportunity to get so many other ideas? And I've shared in a, a recent business bite about your own SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, but in the opportunities is to write down what you think are the opportunities for your business and then find some positive business associates or friends and ask them uh, what ideas they could think of or opportunities for your business. And you'll be surprised at some of the great ideas that will come out of that. What we need to understand is people want to contribute. They just don't want to do a job usually, they actually want to contribute in some way. Your team actually want to be part of a company going places. They may not seem like that, but when they see success in the company, they feel proud and they feel, most people want to feel part of that going forward. They want to come to work every day and feel good about their job. They want to be proud of the company they work for the products, the services they produce, and their contribution to the community. In fact, when you get involved in the community as a business in supporting it, it actually makes them and their family feel totally different about your company. And when they achieve success and are recognised for their efforts, they thrive and they'll go outside their own work time to think about the business, to connect, to generate ideas. That's human nature at work. Uh, the next thing is you need to know your people. Take time to find out their ideas, learn their strengths, and also note their weaknesses. Appreciate their contributions and thank them for it. Hear their frustrations, because even out of frustration comes solutions, and ask for their solutions while you're at it. The next thing you need to do is cut through the red tape. It's an interesting story about Nokia, the, the Finnish mobile phone giant. They experienced a dramatic downturn in their market share many years ago, largely because its organisation squashed critical decision-making processes. For a company in the fast-changing field of IT and telecommunications, this was spelled death for them. Nokia's com competitors like Apple began releasing their leading edge products before no Nokia was able to even get any critical decisions made uh, by their leadership and got outmaneuvered by Apple simply because they were not nimble and fast enough. You can see real innovation and motivation coming from your people by clearing unnecessary obstacles out of the way. You simplify communications within your business, encourage people to contribute positive ideas, allowing basic decision making rather than stifling it. And one of the ideas I found in Gloria Jean's Coffees days and in the advertising agency days when I was running the agency was I used to manage, which is often called about walking around. And I would spend the time when I was in the office to walk around and talk with people. And often over a period of time, ideas or suggestions about improving processes made the company far more efficient and profitable. So we've got to learn to lead our people and not stifle them. Thank you for this business bite.